let's start a discussion about reaction stoichiometry. And so what we're going to be introducing here is a bunch of more conversion factors. Your balanced equation is super powerful, powerful beyond belief. Um, so jumping into this, the first thing I do need to do is write a balanced equation. They gave us um, a skeleton, so we just have to balance it. I see that there's two sodiums over here, so I'm going to put uh, two out front here. And then there's one sulfur, so there's one sulfur on this side. I know the ones are understood, and you don't usually need to write them, but I'm going to write them in, in purple to kind of emphasize the conversion factor. So those are the coefficients of our balanced equation here. So given the coefficients of the balanced equation, um, we can create a lot of conversion factors or relationships. So for instance, and this is before I'm even jumping into the problem, I can say that there's two moles of sodium for every one mole of sulfur. Like all conversion factors, that could be flipped upside down if that's the way we need to use it. So we could say one mole of sulfur needs two moles of sodium for the reaction. Um, it doesn't have to just be between the reactants. We can create the conversion factor between one of the reactants and one of the products. So again, grabbing the coefficients of the balance equation and you're going to always use the word mole. So two moles of sodium will react to produce one, this one right here, mole of sodium sulfide. And that two can be flipped. So we could say one mole of sodium sulfide requires two moles of sodium. I'm going to be very detailed about this first one, especially. So there's one more combination that's possible. We can create a conversion factor between the sulfur and the sodium sulfide. But when you get more products, more reactants, it's between every single one of them is possible. Um, so the last one I'm going to write, or the last pair, would be one mole of sulfur per one mole of sodium sulfide. And that can be flipped. So we could say one mole of sodium sulfide for every one mole of sulfur. All right, so I usually don't do this um, ahead of time. I usually create my mole to mole conversion factor on the fly. Um, and, and we'll start seeing that as we get more into it. But I want everybody to start thinking about how you can pull out these conversion factors from our balanced equation. Let's read the problem. So it says, calculate the number of moles of sodium atoms. So a lot of extra wording in this problem. What do they want at the end of the day? They want the number of moles of sodium. The fact that it's sodium atoms, meh, uh, that's a little bit confusing. But what we want is the number of moles of sodium that will react with Here's our given information. So just like all of our other dimensional analysis problems, we always start with this given information. So we're going to start with 2.27 moles of sulfur. And then they're describing the equation to form sodium sulfide. Yeah, I know it's forming sodium sulfide. I can see that right here. So this is, is just extra information. 
to kind of maybe confuse us or maybe it's helpful, I don't know, but it's definitely extra information. Um, so let's jump in. So I'm going to start with what they gave me. So 2.27 moles of sulfur. And yeah, it's moles of sulfur atoms, but that's just them being super descriptive. Let's cross out the atoms as well. It didn't say calculate the number of atoms. They were just talking about moles of sulfur atoms. So we have 2.27 moles of sulfur, the information they gave us. And then I set up my conversion th factor thinking, what do I want to get rid of? Well, I want to get rid of moles of sulfur. So I'm going to put that in the bottom. And I would like to go to moles of sodium. So I'm going to put that in a numerator. And we already wrote this one down. This was actually the first one we wrote down. But if I hadn't written it down ahead of time, I go to my balance equation. And I'm like, oh, there's a 2 in front of my sodium. And there's a 1 in front of the sulfur, right? Um, so that's all set up. We got to see how stuff is canceling. So moles of sulfur cancels with moles of sulfur. And I'm just left with moles of sodium. So in my calculator, I'm going to do 2.27 times 2. And I got 4.54 moles of sodium. So when I go to balance this equation, the first thing that pops out at me is that there's three chlorines over here. So I'm going to put a three in front of the hydrochloric acid to try to fix that problem. So now I have three hydrogen and three chlorines. And I go over here and I notice that I have two hydrogens. So this is what, in my head, it's my own term, but I call it an even odd problem. I know that this is going to go two, four, six, eight. And this is an odd number. So I need to fix this side to turn it into an even number without screwing everything else up either. So I'm thinking, what if I double this and make it six? That way it's a nice even number. Six hydrogens over here. And then I know that I can get six hydrogens over here by putting a three. So three times two is six. And then we have six hydrogens. Now I messed up my chlorines. I have six chlorines. But I know that I can put a two out front here to get six chlorines over there. Two aluminums. And just put a two there. In this problem, they're asking us to solve for the number of moles of hydrogen gas. And they give us some extra information that it's reacting with aluminum metal. But I really want to hone in on the fact that we're solving for the hydrogen gas. I'm going to set my problem by starting with the given piece of information, the 7.18 moles of hydrochloric acid. So my conversion factor needs to get rid of the moles of hydrochloric acid. So I'll write that in the denominator. And I need to turn that into moles of hydrogen gas. So that will go in the numerator. Sometimes I check how stuff is canceling even before I complete the conversion factor. Just to make sure I'm on the right track. So Moles of hydrochloric acid would cancel with moles of hydrochloric acid, and that will leave us with moles of H2. That's perfect, because that's what they wanted us to solve for. So I'm going to grab the coefficients in front of those species. So for instance, the hydrogen gas had a 3 out front, and then our hydrochloric acid has a 6 out front, so I'll put that there. 
Now in my calculator, I'm going to do 7.18 times 3 divided by 6. And that got me 3.59 moles of hydrogen gas. Alright, so a key thing here is that the equation is already balanced. Um, I went ahead and put a 1 in front of the lanthanum chloride, that's understood, because I'm going to need that value when I set up my conversion factor. So you're going to start with the piece of information they gave us, the 30 moles of hydrochloric acid. And we want to get rid of moles of hydrochloric acid, so I'm going to write that in the denominator. And we're trying to go to this species here, so I'll write moles of lanthanum chloride in the numerator. Now I need to complete this with those coefficients. So there's a 3 in front of the hydrochloric acid, that'll go here, and a 1 in front of the lanthanum chloride. Moles of hydrochloric acid cancels moles of hydrochloric acid. And so at the end of the day, I'll do 30 divided by 3, and that gives me 10 moles of the lanthanum chloride. So here they ask us how many moles of octane, that's C8H18, can be produced when we have 2.15 moles of hydrogen gas. They talk about this excess C8H14. We can ignore that for now. That just means that we have plenty of this reagent and it's not going to impact our final quantities. What's going to determine the final quantities is this number that they gave us. So I'm going to focus in, I'm going to hone in on that value there. All right, so first things first, we need to balance our equation. It looks like the carbons are good to go. We have eight carbons on both sides. Here I have 14 hydrogens, and here I have 18 hydrogens. So I need four more hydrogens on this side. So by putting a two in front of that, two times two is four, plus 14, now I have 18 on both sides. I'm also going to add in one. Even though they're understood, it's going to help me when I set up my conversion factors. So let's start with what they gave us. So 2.15 moles of H2. And then I want to get rid of the moles of H2. I want to turn that into moles of C8H18. So I'm going to grab my conversion factors. I have a 1 in front of my C8H18 and a 2 in front of the hydrogen gas. Let me check my units here. Moles of hydrogen cancel moles of hydrogen. Just left with the octane. So in my calculator, I'm going to do 2.15 divided by 2. I don't usually stress about the 1s if there's just 1. So 2.15 divided by 2. And I get 1.075 moles of C8H18. At the end of the day, since there's only three sig figs here, I'm going to also report this value to three sig figs. So 1.08 moles of C8H18. 